According to a new report, members of the Trump transition team are currently doing some research on how they can prosecute generals in the United States military. So they may charge people with treason over the, uh, admittedly clumsy withdrawal from Afghanistan. Treason is a word that these idiots throw around like it's a football. Anybody they don't like treason. Here's where it gets kind of funny. The decision to withdraw from Afghanistan came from president Joe Biden. And therefore, as the commander in chief of the armed forces, he gives the order. It is actually a requirement that those military leaders follow the order. Here's where it gets even funnier. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, over the summer, the United States Supreme court with a six, three Republican majority actually handed down a decision telling us that uh, presidents have immunity for official acts. And here's the kicker that presidential immunity actually extends to the entire executive branch. So when the president of the United States is giving direct military orders and those individuals follow those direct military orders, do you know what also protects them? Yeah, I figured you could put it together. Presidential immunity, presidential immunity. In fact, a lot of the people you guys have been talking about wanting to prosecute are all protected from that same presidential immunity that you took to the Supreme court that is now protecting them. Whoopsie do. So friends, what do we know about Donald Trump's many criminal cases? Well, we know that his two federal prosecutions are reportedly winding down. Donald Trump's Georgia state Rico prosecution we know is stuck in the appellate courts at the moment. The sentencing in Donald Trump's criminal case in New York on 34 felony guilty verdicts is on hold, at least for the moment. We'll learn more come December 9th. The many civil suits that have been brought against him are up and running, alive and kicking. So friends, those civil cases should just keep on keeping on right through Donald Trump's presidency because he has no presidential immunity in connection with those civil cases. Welcome everybody. Hope you had a good weekend. Something is very wrong with Donald Trump's transition. Trump is refusing to disclose who is actually funding this transition to begin with. We also don't have any idea uh, who is uh, donating money, funding the transition. And thus it makes it more difficult to even know where to look for the corruption, nepotism, quid pro quos. You scratch my back. I scratch yours. There is no legal requirement, no re legal requirement with regard to how any of this is ultimately going to be handled without disclosing donors. We also would be worried about foreign influence. Obviously, the name of the game is hiding, hiding that, obscuring that, making it difficult for people to know who you even owe the favors to. Trump team still hasn't signed the transition documents in the absence of signed MOUs. The current government cannot begin the process of providing briefings or security clearances for incoming officials. Crucially, the FBI also remains unable to conduct any background checks on Trump's prospective cabinet. Donald Trump is nominating to his cabinet some problematic people, problematic for national security, certainly problematic in terms of will they do anything to help the average American person? What we're seeing just with the transition is already a sort of red alert. What the hell is going on here moment? Joe Scarborough and Nika Brzezinski who went on bended knee and without shame to interview Trump post election and humiliated themselves in the process. Joe and Nika provided a vivid example of obeying in advance. They did exactly what Timothy Snyder warned about in his book on tyranny. Do not obey in advance. Most of the power of authoritarianism is freely given. In times like these, individuals think ahead about what a more repressive government will want and then offer themselves without being asked. A citizen who adapts in this way is teaching power what it can do. Trump is learning pretty quickly the concept of F around, find out, as his tariff scheme just got turned on its head. So just yesterday, he took to Truth Social, writing, on January 20th, as one of my many first executive orders, I will sign all necessary documents to charge Mexico and Canada a 25% tariff on all products coming into the United States and its ridiculous open borders. This tariff will remain in effect until such time as drugs, in particular fentanyl, and all illegal aliens stop this invasion of our country. Well, turns out both Canada and Mexico have a pretty good sense of who Trump is by now and a pretty good sense that he's not interested in diplomacy and only cares about brute force. From Mexico, you've got the explicit threat of a trade war. And from Canada, you've got the implicit threat of a trade war. And I want to be crystal clear here. There are no winners in a trade war. None. But the word tariff is... The most beautiful, beautiful word in the dictionary, remember that. Wow, so if we tariff the exports from other countries, they'll just pay us money with no downsides? Why didn't we try this before? Because that's not how tariffs work. 
And we have tried this before, and it might have caused the Great Depression. So say that a Chinese manufacturer agrees to sell Nike a pair of shoes for $20. A 60% tariff means that the importer, that is Nike, pays $12 to the US government when those sneakers are offloaded from a cargo ship docked in Long Beach, California. Trump insists that the Chinese manufacturer is the one who ultimately pays for that tariff, and that this will swell the US government coffers with no impact on the American consumer whatsoever. But that's just wrong. The Chinese manufacturer is never going to eat the $12 tariff, and Nike doesn't want to reduce its net profit. So the end result is that the $12 tariff gets passed on to the American consumer at the point of sale, raising the wholesale price of that pair of sneakers by $12. Yeah, if I can interject for a second, the problem is actually worse. You think, okay, a 60% tariff, so the consumer just ends up paying $12 more. Not great, but not terrible. But no, because sellers operate by gross margin. So if Nike imports a shoe for $20, they need to make a profit. But they aren't selling directly to the consumer. They need to sell the shoe to the retailer. And transport, advertising, and overhead is expensive. And doubling the manufacturing cost before selling it wholesale would be totally normal. So let's say they sell it to Foot Locker for $40. But Foot Locker has to pay staff and operating costs and all their stores, which is expensive. So Foot Locker roughly doubles the wholesale cost of it again and ultimately sells the shoe to a consumer for $80. But that's in a tariffless world. A 60% tariff makes it $32 at import instead of $20, and $64 at wholesale, and then $128 at retail, assuming the same margins. So a $12 increase in tariffs on the cost of goods could easily result in a $48 increase in the final sales price that consumers pay. Plus, the domestic manufacturers don't just sit back while their foreign competitors raise their price. Why would they turn down free money when the consumer doesn't have any choice but to pay more? They raise their price to match or just undercut the foreign competition. Oh, and the cherry on top is that our foreign trading partners don't just sit back and take it either. They issue retaliatory tariffs against American exports, making them less competitive abroad so people buy fewer American goods. And none of those taxes nor the original tariffs actually go to American companies. You only need one toothbrush, and Bill Gates only needs one toothbrush. But if the tax on a toothbrush is, say, 12 cents, well, that's a lot bigger share of your paycheck than it is of Bill Gates's. But Trump believes in cutting taxes on corporations and wealthy individuals, essentially returning us to the pre-16th Amendment days. In fact, the massive tax cut he rammed through during his first term is about to expire. Spoiler alert, it did not increase government revenues as promised. And now he wants to make those tax cuts permanent. So Trump has to find another source to make up for all the cash that will not be coming into the government coffers if he keeps cutting taxes for rich people. And that's yet another reason he's so invested in telling the lie that other countries pay import tariffs. Headline, Rudy Giuliani loses his lawyers and his cool in court as he continues to defy court orders to turn over property and assets to the two Georgia state election workers he savagely defamed, for which a jury ordered him to pay $148 million in damages. But first, Judge Lewis Lyman allowed Mr. Giuliani's lawyers to withdraw from the case. They had requested to be removed two weeks ago, citing an unspecified, quote, professional ethics concern. So friends, let me add here that when defense lawyers withdraw from representing a client, ordinarily they will say something like, well, we have irreconcilable differences with our client, but that is not what Rudy Giuliani's lawyers chose to tell the judge that was their basis for needing to withdraw from representing Rudy Giuliani. No, they said they had professional ethics concerns. In other words, they wanted to act ethically. In a statement on Tuesday, Mr. Caruso said that there had been a difference of opinion with Mr. Giuliani, but they wished his new counsel every success yeah, in other words, uh, good luck representing this guy. But there was another reason Rudy's lawyer gave for why he needs a continuance of the January 16 date when they're supposed to litigate whether Rudy has to give up his home in Florida as well to satisfy the, the damages judgment that was awarded against him. Here's the second reason Rudy's new lawyer came up with. Also, Mr. Camerata said that Giuliani would like to attend President-elect Donald J. Trump's inauguration on January 20, and a trial could prevent that. So get this, friends. Rudy's lawyer is saying to the judge that Rudy doesn't want to have to be in court for more hearings beginning on January 16th because he wants to attend the inauguration of his RICO co-conspirator, his criminal associate, his charged co-defendant in a Georgia state prosecution, Donald Trump. What a compelling reason to try to convince a judge to grant a continuance. The judge's answer? Um, the answer, Judge Lyman said, was no. Yeah, he turned over the car, but not the keys. Your client is a competent person, the judge added, noting that Mr. Giuliani was a former U.S. attorney. He was, however, recently disbarred in New York and Washington, D.C., and Mr. Giuliani objected. First of all, it is usually the lawyer 
who objects during court proceedings. And I'm not sure what Rudy Giuliani was objecting to when the judge said, your client is a competent person and your client was a former U.S. attorney. And Rudy Giuliani uh, objected, quote, next time he's not going to be permitted to speak, Judge Lyman told Mr. Camerata, and the court will have to take action. Next time, next time, the court will have to take action. If you continue to defy court orders, if you speak out when you're not supposed to speak out in court, if you continue to hide your assets from the two women you defamed, the two women you've been ordered to pay $148 million, next time there's going to be consequences. If you keep it up, I might have to do something. Why is there always a next time for the ruling class criminals? Next time, next time, next time, you know, you, Mr. Defendant, Mr. Respondent, a person of power and influence and connections who wants to attend a presidential inauguration instead of being forced to go to court and make your victims whole, comply with court orders next time if you keep it up. What a bunch of horseshit. But next time, I'm really going to have to consider imposing some sort of a sanction. Next time. You know, friends, most people don't get a next time in the criminal justice system. Surely the people without power or influence, privilege, connections, wealth, they don't get a next time. 